1953, former journalist Roy Chancellor published a novel, Johnny Guitar, which he dedicated to his fellow MCA client, Joan Crawford. Chancellor adapted the book into a cliché-ridden screenplay, which was given to a third MCA client, director Nicholas Ray, who'd studied architecture with Frank Lloyd Wright and who'd already made three or four of the best pictures since the war, They Lived by Night and The Lusty Men. The studio was Republic, a cheapy outfit which wanted to try out a new film stock called True Colour. Nick Ray hated the script, so Philip Jordan, a leftist who sometimes fronted for writers blacklisted by McCarthy, was brought in. Ray and Jordan rewrote. They introduced a fierce new political anti-witch hunt feel to the story. Joan Crawford's character, a saloon owner on the outskirts of Albuquerque who's waiting for the railroad, became in their new version a principled individualist who stands up to the bully boy tactics of local bankers and lawmen. The scenes where Crawford and Sterling Hayden talk about the posse being an animal and Mercedes McCambridge's extraordinary incitement to hatred speech are typical of the script editions they made. There wouldn't have been any bank hold up. The stage wouldn't have been robbed. My brother wouldn't have been killed. I've been right about that woman ever since she came. I wanted to run her out before she ever got in, but you wouldn't listen. None of you. Filming began and things were immediately bad. Joan Crawford was drunk a lot and got jealous of Mercedes McCambridge, especially when McCambridge got applauded by the crew for her performance of the lynch mob scene. Well, what are you waiting for? You heard her tell how they're going to run the railroad through here, bring in thousands of new people from the east. Farmers, dirt farmers, squatters. They'll push us out. Is that what you're waiting for? Crawford was found drunk having strewn McCambridge's clothes on a highway near the location in Arizona. Director Ray said of Crawford, as a human being, she's a great actress. Said McCambridge in her autobiography, poor old rotten egg Joan, I kept my mouth shut about her for a quarter of a century. Now I really can't be bothered thinking about her. One of the reasons why Crawford was sick with jealousy at McCambridge was that few people took her seriously as an actress, whilst McCambridge had been feted in theatre, and Orson Welles said she was the greatest radio actress ever. She later did the voice of The Exorcist, and paradoxically for this film, where she's such a right-winger, became one of Hollywood's most committed Democrats. She's still alive, but her life took a tragic turn when her only son killed himself and his family. Anyway, poor old Rotten Egg Jones' outrage at the attention going to her antagonist led her to demand five more scenes, saying that she was the Clark Gable of the picture. You've got to own everything. They can't stand to see anybody else live. Well, you're going to. You're going to see a whole new town, right where you're standing. A town you don't own. The filmmakers had to comply, and the result of this masculinization of her part gives the film some of its fascinating sense of fluid sexual identity. The title role of Johnny Guitar, played by Sterling Hayden, was reduced in proportion. He and Crawford, in effect, swapped roles, and so it's the two women who have the shootout at the end. Johnny Guitar was released in America to pretty terrible reviews. Crawford once said, there's no excuse for a picture being so bad. Yet it's one of the greatest westerns, if not one of the greatest films ever made. It's not just me that says this. The French director and critic Francois Truffaut wrote that anyone who rejects Johnny Guitar should never go to see movies again. Such people will never recognize inspiration, a shot, an idea, a good film, or even cinema itself. The film's been referred to in many other movies since, including Godard's Weekend. Gavin Lambert wrote a novel, The Slide Area, based on its production. It plays almost continually in Paris, and Martin Scorsese says it's one of the cinema's great operatic works. You'll notice that the painted backdrops are obvious, and that the editing is rough and jerky. But maybe, like so many people before, you'll like the maturity of the love story and the leftist denunciation of mob rule the psychotic intensity of Crawford and McCambridge, the sense that this apparently terrible movie star caused this beautiful thing to be made, Nick Ray's placing of people like chessmen on a board, his use of space like the architect that he was, the fantastic unusual colour, and, my favourite, the hysteria about what men are and why they fear women. Maybe we ought to... Maybe we ought to what? Nothing. All right. Johnny Guitar is, I think, one of the greatest 
strangest things this century has produced. I'm with Truffle. If you don't like it, you're on another planet. <laughs>